So I went from the fall of 2008, I believe, until until I visited the campus in April of 2009, and then we were basically starting in August 2009, so really a year, less than a year. First thing primarily is, is just to give voice to undergraduates. Um, most institutions are like ours, they don't have graduate programs. Um, there's a lot of film studies courses, even in non-film departments all around the world now. So there's a massive audience of very film literate, very passionate young writers about cinema, and other than often quite ephemeral campus publications or newspapers on campus, there aren't that many places in which they can publish. So we felt that just the quality of papers that you see as a, as a film professor, written by undergraduates, that there's some talent there, and we felt like this was I was going to say market, but that's not necessarily the right word, of just a population out there that would be interested in being able to publish and then just reading the work about other people. I also feel as well, there's a lot of conversation about the death of film criticism and that film critics are on the rocks now, but living on a, living and working around a university with screenings on campus, with student filmmaking, with DVDs and increasing accessibility to all sorts of films, past, present, from all around the world, in my opinion, there's never really been a better time to study and write about cinema. Mm. So we felt like there were just a lot of things coming together with this, and intellect's enthusiasm for the project, and then from a very tentative initial call for papers, we were just <laughs> absolutely inundated with, yeah. with people who not only sent submissions, but professors from New Zealand, South Africa, Canada, um, Western Europe, all over the place, also contacting us saying we really like this idea and uh, I'm going to help let my students know about this. So we just felt it was this and critical think, mass reach, I guess. I think too, from our own experience as undergrads, it's kind of artificial. You write this paper, you get invested in it, and then it's over at the end of semester and you don't have an outlet for it. And I think that that's, we were trying to think back and reflect back to our own experiences on undergrad and saying what we would have liked to have been able to do as students Absolutely. before grad school. Right now, that is um, the editorial board is are the students who are in a class that the UNCW offers in their film studies department, which is um, 369 Publishing the Undergraduate Magazine. Um, and so, as it's been for the two semesters we've been teaching it now, the fall and the spring, those students were the editorial board for the first two issues and now the spring for the second two issues of the first volume year. So it's always the students in that class who are serving as the peer reviewers, deciding on content, making recommendations to the editors-in-chief, um, Tim and myself. Um, our aim, though, is to open this up to other campuses, so we're exploring the possibility of um, having guests editorial boards from other campuses who would teach a similar class to what we offer here at UNCW and give their students the same opportunity to um, just understand the publication process, the publishing process, and decide the content for these issues. And a recent development, I have to say, is we've just had undergraduates start to contact us, just email us from out of the blue from other institutions. We had that one last week, for example. Uh, so we're still figuring out this, so I think we might have I don't know whether it's going to be uh, undergraduates based at other campuses or just we're always interested in hearing from our potential contributors, our potential readers, of figuring out ways in which what we still believe is the first ever undergraduate peer review film studies journal in North America about how that might develop. So we're always keen to get input from the people who are making the thing work basically. Enthusiasm. They really are a very supportive um, publishing outfit, basically. Um, but they also ha they're, they have amazing graphic design. I think they're very good at yeah. um, helping with a consistent look and feel for a journal, and they're great at marketing and promotion. So they have all this kind of infrastructure in place, so they can just kind of slot film matters in, and it just, just becomes part of the intellect machine in, in some in a good way. way. In a good way. Right. Um, so, you know, I've, I've, my first experience working with Intellect was through Film International, and I really credit 
intellect with developing the Film International product. I think we had always strong content from our contributors before we worked with Intellect, but Intellect really helped us create a sustainable product that is reaching an audience. Right, and Intellect has an ideology of they want to very much give their editors and editorial teams a lot of liberty. They want them to think about what the mission of that journal is going to be. And this was the case really from day one with, with Film Matters. All they've done to us is just encourage us to mm think broadly and, and, and innovate, which is what we're trying to do through the ways we've talked about. But um, they do, as Liza says, it's they, they have a graphic design expertise. Bizarrely enough, one of, the, one of the problems, I think, with a lot of film journals and film books is, is the lack of images. Images are often expensive. It can draw out and delay the production process. But right from day one, really, they wanted to make Film Matters a very illustration-intensive, image-intensive publication and especially with issue 1.2 where we have an article on Sin City and graphic novel um, issues of transition from graphic novel to screen but already some of the submissions we're getting are very image heavy now and undergraduates are thinking in terms of frame grabs and uh, promotional materials and posters and all these kinds of materials that get films into our culture or bring them back from history so that I think has been a big part of what Film Matters is, is growing into and that came from intellect. evolve the journal and, and respond to how people, our audience, our readers, our contributors, our editorial committees conceive of it as well. We have um, some editorial direction. We have a, we have a, a special issue 1.4 mm -hmm. on uh, women in cinema, which is very much, a, I think, quite a widely discussed and quite, a, dare I say, a hot topic right now, which we've got some really good material for that. But we're also, 2.2 is going to be... We don't know yet, actually, because it's the, right. the film theme voting that's going on right, right. now. Right, so. as we speak, <laughs> votes are being cast online, yes. uh, and so literally the people who are interested in Film Matters will determine the interest of Film Matters. So doing things like that, but broadening broadening the, the coverage we have, as I was saying before, I, I'd like to see some interviews appear, mm -hmm. interviews with professionals. I'd like us to diversify our coverage as much as possible. Liza's interest is in, uh, in avant-garde cinema, and uh, I'd like to see uh, more material on Asian cinema, but just a good spread of world cinema, past and present, mm -hmm. from the mainstream to some of the more esoteric fringes of, of film. And as I was saying before, I think there's never really been a better time. There's so much film available now um, via home media, um, and there are so many regional festivals now that it's actually quite, I wouldn't say easy, but you can, you can find things if you look a little uh, off the beaten path. So I think there's more material out there than there has been before. And I think among cinephile undergraduates who are just dying to have their say on a lot of these issues related to film, we think Film Matters is the home for that kind of, that kind of work and that kind of thinking. So we, uh, we want to hopefully be a good home for these kinds of, uh, these kind of works. And I just as a final word, I'd say I think it's very gratifying to work with undergraduates and authors that are just starting out and yeah. kind of learning about publishing very exciting. It's nice to be able to mentor them through that process, um, especially when you're used to working right. with more, you know, perhaps jaded scholars. Or right. Kind. Undergraduates don't have any axe to grind. They're just enthusiastic about what they're enthusiastic about. They come to a classroom. They have, say, a, a basic interest in Japanese cinema or French cinema, um, but they'll gravitate to a particular issue or a filmmaker or a topic and make that thing their own. And film matters being a kind of mouthpiece for that work. Is, is great and the energy level is so high and the best wishes we've received from, from academics around the world. And I, just again, my final point is, uh, academics sometimes get a bad rap, right? We're the ivory tower brigade, we're out of touch, we're self-involved and so on. But what I've seen with corresponding with professors connected to Film Matters is how excited they are to be mentors, to let their best students know about Film Matters, to encourage them to submit what they think are the, the best quality things out there. So it's not just a, completely about undergraduates, it's just about the film studies community mm -hmm. that I think Film Matters can actually be a kind of... Well, it celebrates the point. undergraduate scholar yeah. as well as the mentor and the program. Absolutely.